Okay. I can't wait to see a negative three star match. Negative three and a half star. Sandman uh, coming to the ring, already drinking a beer right through the curtain. Yeah. Busted open from the beer can. Yeah. Stevie Richards, fresh off of his uh cup of coffee in WCW. Yeah. Oh man. Dun, dun, dun. I, okay, so you know, uh you were talking about these security guys. These are like some of the security guys that we had at Starcast, right? No, it's Atlas Security. It's the exact same. Okay. I hired these guys. So they're they're not gimmick security guys. They are shooting security guys that they hired at ECW. Yeah. Okay. The best in the business. Yeah. Which, by the way, recently, you know, we had David Crockett uh, at our show in Charlotte. And it, when I'm sitting there talking to David, David sitting between you and me, I, I immediately thought, you know what? We ought to have Doug Dellinger here. So maybe the next time we're in the Charlotte area, we can dig him out. Well, the trouble is he lives in Fort Myers. <laughs> well, we, we had a whole conversation about this in the back, but at your advanced uh, age, you've already forgotten. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember that. Mrs. Thompson said, where's Doug Dillinger these days? And then yeah. he said, oh, he's moved down to Fort Myers, but he has to come up here and visit the grandkids every now and again. Oh, oh yeah. I do remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I think my, I was thinking about Francine's panties at that time, which I often do think about pitching coach Ray Miller. What it says. What do you think Ray Miller's up to? I don't know. Uh, Ray Miller was a long time. <laughs> Look at that. Cigarette in the side of his mouth, blood coming down his head, and a beer in one hand. Kendo stick in the other. Huh? There's a pro wrestler. <laughs> Are you shit talking? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> oh, Klondike God. Klondike Bill was a pro wrestler. Who was? <laughs> Klondike Bill. Yeah. Excuse he was. And you're saying Sandman can't be? No, I'm just saying that. No, I'm just saying the look right there. Okay. I mean, how many times do you, do you take a shot of a guy getting ready to go in the ring with a cigarette in the side of his mouth and a can of beer in one hand? Come on. It's just, it's just, a, it's a shocking visual. Not for me. I mean, there's many of wrestlers that went in the back, had a cigarette and a beer, but never came to the ring. Jack Briscoe smoked and had a beer. But he never brought it to the ring. Okay. Here he is, Sandman, four time All American, Florida State. <laughs> Bobby Bowden's favorite out of Warner Robins, Georgia. How much longer do you think we can keep this up before Jim Ross absolutely smacks the shit out of one of us? <laughs> oh, JR's got a great sense of humor. I know he's been making fun of me for years. That's fine. I, I know he is I know. in his Jim Barnett voice. Her. Her. Oh, Connie's got those sweet cheeks. Oh, Her. <laughs> you do have rather, uh, you do have sweet cheeks. You know, you do have a, a real, well, you've seen both sets. Which one's sweeter. <laughs> Can I tell the story? Sure. <laughs> so. All right, this little behind the scenes shit. Okay. I pull in early to the comedy zone in Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> and the comedy zone is in this, you know, that there's a it's a big building. There's other there's restaurants and everything. And I pull in and I don't I don't know where the fuck I'm going. So I send Conrad a text. I'm in the parking lot. And I said <laughs> <laughs> I said <laughs> I said, how do I get in? <laughs> Text us. I can't. <laughs> Try the door. It worked for me. <laughs> so I go to the green room and open the door, and apparently Megan is giving you the Iggy that I'm getting ready to walk through the door. <laughs> and I walk through the door. <laughs> And Conrad has his ass up in the air. <laughs> I just happened to be walking through the door at the time you were changing clothes. And there you were standing on top of the couch or the table or whatever with your ass up in the air. So that's how my day started. I wasn't changing clothes. I just wanted you to see it. And I knew you wouldn't be ready for it. So 
I knew you were coming in and, and I said, Hey, is he, is Tony by himself? And she looked and she said, yeah. And so then there they go. Cause I didn't know, like, did somebody tag along? If you had one of the kids with you, I wasn't going to do it. If it was Chris, I would, but yeah, you know, right. if it was Lori or something, I wasn't going to yeah. do it, but yeah. Oh, he's by himself. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two things here in a small room like that. If you're going to show your ass, everybody's going to see it. Sure. Big ass, small room. Right. And number two, I would never bring my daughter with me. She's not allowed to come to our shows. Good. Cause I don't want, look at this. Oh, good God. He just threw the ladder at him. I know and he, he, that ladder could have easily skipped off and hit a fan. How many, you know, there had to be fans getting hurt in these shows. I mean, I don't know if it happened a lot, but I mean, they were right there at ringside. They did some crazy shit. You know, you know, obviously they had beer splattered on them, probably blood splattered on the fans and fans had just had to get fucking hurt all the time. What about this match? Didn't Melter like chat me up on this. Sabu beat Sandman in 20 minutes and 55 seconds of a tables and ladders match. Probably never have two men pulled out so many stops and tried so hard, done so many impressive spots in such a horrible match. These two missed more spots badly than Reggie white did against Steve McMichael. They made Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper age in the cage match. Look like a flair steamboat classic. A collection of spots using tables so pathetically and obviously gimmicked and ladders, most of which missed. Sandman, who went into the match injured, screwed himself up doing somersaults through tables, trying to pull the match out of the toilet. What made it the worst match of the year was that even after they had for the most part killed the crowd, as there was no heat except for the chance whatever whenever a table broke, they kept doing the same stunts over and over and the match never ended. There were people who thought this was the best match of the show as they probably went through 10 tables and tried so many daredevil spots in the process and Sabu at least hit on every springboard spot, but the crowd was dead and the work was horrible. What they did between the tables and ladder spots was like watching Jim Duggan against Ahmed Johnson, probably more due to Sandman being injured as there was almost nothing he could do, but destroy himself. At one point, Sabu threw fire, but the crowd and the camera were so distracted that the effect of it was lost and he missed anyway. Sandman was about to hit Alfonso when Sabu drop kicked him off the top and Sabu then delivered an Arabian face buster with the ladder onto Sandman for the pin. Sandman was out in the ring for a long time and got a good polite reaction from the fans leaving who did appreciate how hard he worked and how much he destroyed himself physically negative three and a half stars. Whoa, man. That's uh, that they crucified him on that, by the way, it got, uh, here's, here's what's fun about this. Cause it is a split opinion on this match. All right. It came in second by one vote for the best match poll in the readers from the wrestling observer, but it also won in a runaway, the worst match poll. So it came in second, nearly one best match, but it ran away with worst match. So. Just goes to show you can't please everyone. Well, it, it just proves to me that, you know, when people get really upset about what's in a newsletter and you, you've been guilty of that at different times. Sure. It's just a dude's opinion. Right. So, no, I mean, it's not like, you know, when an appraiser comes to your house, if you're going to sell your house or refinance your house or get a loan on your house, whatever you have an appraiser come out. And he doesn't tell you what the value of your house is. He gives his opinion of what the value of your house is. It's very subjective. And that's the same thing with wrestling to me, or for that matter, all art. It's very subjective. What you like, I may not like and vice versa. So that's his opinion, man, that it's negative three and a half stars. By the way, I love the fan who put a little target on the table. That was hilarious. That's pretty fucking cool. (laughs) It's just his opinion and everybody's got different ones here. I get it. But you know, uh, I'm not going to argue with you on this. I, I, but, and I agree with opinions, but if, if, if opinions were, if they were uninfluenced opinions by politics, I would say, yeah, I agree with it. But a lot of these opinions that we saw on dirt sheets were influenced because of the guys who called him. 
and that's where that's where I kind of draw the line. Um, but anyway, so much for that. Uh, and these guys are working hard. I, I think it's funny that that he said in that in the write up about this match got a polite applause. Hey, guess what? Ain't nothing polite about this crowd at all. <laughs> I love that word polite in an ECW event. What's he going to fucking do here? Oh, he's going to use the chair to spring over the top and hit the top. Fuck. That's a hell of a spot, buddy. That is a hell of a spot. Chair, rope, table. And yeah, the table's gimmick. Why fucking not? Didn't want to kill the guy. Well, I guess they did want to kill each other. Sandman was injured before the match, huh? Yep. I mean, everybody is a CCW. Yeah. I mean, right. Tommy dreamer wrestled in a fucking boot. Ah, look at, he said, Oh my God. Fuck. Jesus. <sighs> Crazy shit, man. Without question. <laughs> I'm gonna get it over. I'm gonna get correct. I'm gonna get it over. <laughs> yeah. Without question, over. Oh, good God. What are you thinking of this uh, spectacle? I, I'm thinking I'm thinking it's amazing that these fucking guys can even even walk in their later careers. I, I know some of them can, I'm sure, but Fuck. Sabu could do a lot of great shit, man. But, and look at the, we still got, all right, hang on a second with, with, and I haven't been paying that much attention to around the ring. There was a table on every side of the ring or do they just keep putting up tables? Yeah. Sabu keeps putting up tables. Okay. I mean, Sandman does too, but they're just setting up crash spots constantly. All right. There's not like a, a guy in the back running around setting them up. It's just these two guys. All right. I got it. And, and perhaps Fonzie, you know? Yeah. So Sabu has told Fonzie move the tail. I don't know what he said for him to do, but. Oh, um, look at this. There's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way to rehearse this shit. Okay. You just got to tell your opponent, I'm going to throw a ladder at you. It's going to hit you. You know, they, they, they choreograph a lot of shit in wrestling these days. There's no way to choreograph this. You just had to go with the flow on this. I'll put you right here. Oh, by the way, I'm going to climb up top and I'm going to jump on you. I'm not going to just jump on. I'm not going to just jump on you. I'm (laughs) going to jump on you with the ladder. What's he fucking doing? That they are just improvising here. The improv. Oh, what the, he missed completely missed that spot. Didn't he? There's a reason this got negative three and a half stars. Yeah. He, could, he, yeah, he fucked that spot up. Yeah. You know what? I, I, there's, there's a lot that Melcher wrote that I'm agreeing with here. That they're, they're, I, they're in the midst of a cluster fuck and they know it. So they're just trying to, uh, up the wow factor here. And a lot of times it's not working. So he's going to go up top. I certainly hope he connects. Uh, And then it comes down to this Conrad. If you've seen them go through one table, by the time that goes through the sixth table, it loses the effect, right? That's exactly right. You know, if it's used as a, as a real high spot, yeah. You know, then it's cool. But if there's, if there's 30 of them, they mean less and less each time. Yeah. And you know, you can have these big spectacles because Lord knows I loved them, but eventually, you know, they become less meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. And see uh, that uh, there you go. Spectacular move by Sandman, almost like a corkscrew plancha or whatever you want to call it, Mike today. And, uh, the fans sitting on their hands because it meant nothing by this time. It's a case too much. I got it, but still just the visual of all this 
this stuff is crazy. You take one of these spots, just take one of these spots out and show somebody the video of like one of these spots. They're going to say, holy shit, that had to be a great match. But then you let them show, let them see the entire match. And all of a sudden you get high spot fatigue as a fan. And that's what they got here. Miss that. I feel like we need a, uh, a high spot fatigue shirt. I agree. I like that. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Book it there at LoisRules.com, where you can get your T-shirts, plus you can get a call from Tony Schiavone. Right, Conrad? Eventually. Without question. Yep, high spot fatigue is what we got. What was Sandman's injury going into this? Was it a leg injury or a back injury or a fucking neck? It had to have something to do with the spine. Life. <laughs> His injury was <laughs> life injured by life. Life gig me. Uh, I feel like you're on a roll today. Oh man. I, I just, how can you not be on a roll watching a ECW event? It just brings out the best and worst in y'all in, in one. Oh, that, oh, oh, oh that sucks. <laughs> uh, you ever see a why? monkey fuck a football? What's that? You ever see a monkey fuck a football? <laughs> yes. <laughs> monkey fucking a football gimmick. Uh, just leave the ladders alone, guys. Oh, yeah. Why not pin him? Oh, he kicks out. He's been hit with thousands of ladders, 800 tables, a couple of chairs, but he can still kick out. What the fuck? Yeah, I agree. As much as I, once I like the visual of this, this is not, this is not good at all. But then again, other people had an opinion and they liked it. What's he got in his hand here? Is Sabu still performing? Is he still out there performing? Yeah. He's making appearances all the time. I'm talking about, uh, wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He'll set up a table, hit you with a chair, whatever you want. Wow. Oh, he's got to be in his fifties now. One would think, right? Forties, late forties, fifties, whatever. Well, what does that matter? You're still performing. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, you don't see me take a table shot. He'll be, uh, he'll be 54 next yeah. month. You'll find out when you get in your fifties, slow down a little bit. You know, I was in, uh, I was in my fifties when I shit on the floor here at the house. So it happens. I did. I, I look, you laugh. Okay. You laugh. You're in your thirties. You're in thirties, forties, twenties. You raise your leg up and you're going to, you're going to be the life of the party. You raise your leg up the house during Thanksgiving dinner. You go, everybody goes dad. But then when you get in your fifties, you raise your leg up and all of a sudden you shit your pants. It happens. It's part of being, it's part of being old. I have no idea where this came from, but <laughs> there you go. Talking about my shit. Well, you, you talked about. You know, Sabu wrestling in his fifties. And then you just said, I shit the floor in my fifties. <laughs> I had high spot fatigue. Just shit right on the floor. Oh, oh good God. So you said, yeah, high spot fatigue. Yeah. Believe you me. Line it's legit. Day. It's legit because I'm worn out right now. Why don't we have another Jeff Jones running just for the hell of it? He's one of the big eye spots in this show. <laughs> you know, these days though, you know, Jeff Jones is, uh, sort of borrowing Tommy Rich's gimmick. <laughs> What's that? He, Somebody he, say he, something about crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jones basically lives at Jimmy's famous seafood. Okay. I, I had a feeling you were talking about seafood and not the kind that was in his crotch. Oh no, that would require human companionship. And he has none, right? 
No, I'm not saying that. Why are you, why are you being mean to Jeff Jones? <laughs> well, you said crabs, fucker. I didn't. Well, they you're got, the one that's, they got you're the, the one that's, look, I've been in wrestling. When I think of crabs, I don't think, when I think of crabs, I don't think about the time kinds you eat. I think about the kind that Terry Taylor had in his pants. Wait, Terry Taylor had crabs. Did I say that? Yeah. Did you, did you uh, like run a little baby comb through there for him? Oh, uh, Meanwhile, the match still going on and face first Sabu going up top. Whoa. And that's, that's a pretty good spot. But after you've been hit by a million table, what the fuck does it matter? By the way, if you want to see what I really think about Terry Taylor, join us on Patreon and take a look at the latest edition of slap Dick theater. And that will kind of explain all. That's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. By the way, there's a lot of people uh, online who say that our show sucks now because uh, you say the word Patreon and the show was good. But when you started saying the word Patreon, it, uh, it just, the show went to shit. It sucked. Your response. Yeah. Fuck them. Oh, off the top. Really? Because I say Patreon. Yeah. It, that, the show word, suck? That, that word makes the show suck. I've read that feedback a lot. Okay. It was a great show, except you talked about Patreon and I in other words, I don't, I don't like Patreon. Don't talk about Patreon. I got it. I, I, I understand. They're saying Shivani is shilling. Well, guess what? I've been a shill my entire fucking life. Okay. Why don't you, why don't you tune in to, uh, let's see, tune in to, uh, JJ's podcast and fall the fuck asleep. How about that? Okay. Why, why, why are you getting hot about it? It's just an opinion. Everybody's got their own opinion. It's subjective. Uh, Fonzie got the kendo stick. You know what this kendo stick's called? Singapore cane. No, it's called a Patreon. Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the Polish term for it. Patreon. <laughs> so he's got the page. Oh, Oh my God. Those flying Patreons. Oh, he threw oh. right into the Patreon with steps. Yeah. I know. Here Patreon wooden, with steps. Wooden Patreon. Oh, oh. look at Sandman that. Sandman blocked the, uh, the Patreon shot there. Yeah. All right. His hat is made by a company out of a company out of Canada called Patreon Inc. The hat that fell off. Oh, oh my God. Uh, he kicked him right in the Patreon. Yes, he did. Fonzie trying to get up, but he goes on the outside. The referee looks over and says, give me that Patreon. No, I want it. The referee's got the Patreon now. Oh, wait. And Sabu has set Sandman up on Patreon. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Sa but, Sabu climbing to the top. He's got the Patreon in his hand. Oh, oh my God. Right in the face. He hit him in the face with Patreon. Oh, he did. And not only that, he hit him in the face with one of the, uh, one of the Patreon trademarks. As you know, the uh, Patreon trademark is orange and the top of that Patreon ladder is orange. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Absolutely. Man. I, I don't know about you. I'm kind of getting Patreon fatigue right now. Somebody say something about Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the credits. We won't beat it. We won't beat it. Yeah, Tommy, we did. Thank you very much. Hey, is Jim Barnett around. No, he's dead. Tommy. Okay. Uh, Sabu going to go up. He's got that Patreon ladder again. That's the smaller version. The bigger version is available at patreon.com forward slash WHW money. Absolutely. And somebody's trying to call me. The Holy Arabian shit. face buster with the ladder. That's oh. gotta be it. Sandman's even had the asshole of his pants torn out. That's it. The crowd did not pop for the Arabian face buster, but there's the polite applause that Meltzer mentioned. It was a car crash. A lot of people have talked about this as being the worst match ever on ECW pay-per-view, but it was a car crash. Yeah. And of course it was just too much. Absolutely too much. Well, I got to say, 
with the exception of a couple of things leading to the main event here, with the exception of the way Beulah looked, uh, I think our buddy Jeff Jones kind of stole the show a couple of times. Oh my gosh. Listen to you. Yeah, I do. Listen, uh, I'm going to talk to, as soon as we finish here, I'm going to call Jeff. And I'll say, Jeff, did you oversell those spots a little bit? You think? Fuck. We could call him and find out. <laughs> and put him on with us. Nah, nobody wants him on. No. Yeah, okay. Cause he probably asked, asked for money. No, I, no, he's cool. I think, you know, it would just start a whole new Matt Coon feud. Yeah. Let's not do that. I, you know, I kept Jeff in the divorce. Yeah. I, I, I want to say something. Uh, one, two, three. Are you still with us? Are you, you yeah, gotta, okay. gotta talk to the yep. wife? Do you just yep. yell to clean up the fucking dog hair and get back to your goddamn job here on Patreon? <laughs> over the over the top. Look at this. It's a Patreon leg drop. Okay. Uh, well, you know what, Conrad, as an old wise man once told me, I think about 20 minutes ago, it's an opinion. You can't please everyone. So if you're. See, there it is. That thing could have easily skipped right over the top and hit somebody. Here it is again. Oh, man. Yeah, too much. But come on, guys. Get through this replay. I want to see Francine. What the fuck are we doing? I got to see these thousand chair shots and table shots and Patreon nut shots and all this shit. Fuck. Let's go to Francine. Come on. They're going to show another one, aren't they? Don't you motherfuckers. Don't you dare show another replay. Don't you dare. Three, two, one. They queued up another tape or are they going live? Thank God that's over.